Hi, this is video 237. This week Chris fitted the French fuselage nose to Just Jane NX611 and he's completed the reassembly of the ammunition assist unit. Andy has started to reassemble the ammo assist unit is stripped down before Christmas. This unit is for the 0.5 inch calibre guns for the rear turret. When stripped down it was clean, checked and painted. A very delicate stage of the um Oh I won't oh I'll keep my mouth shut and just watch. <laughs> I need I need very very small hands to try and fit these in. I'm getting there. It's looking, it's looking a lot better than it did, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. It really looks good. <laughs> assisted ammunition feed, you say? Uh, ammunition is, yeah, um, feed okay. assisted. So for the, uh, the 50 cals that go on the FNH2 tail gunners yeah. on the Lancaster. Yeah. yeah. So whatever happened to Jane happened to these? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good Andy, that. Yeah. Thank you. Did you, uh, did you miss them taking the wings off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry, no, he started off, he just set off. There's, there's, there's lots of hammering involved. I cover all, but... There's lots of hammering involved. I bet there was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they must, they must have had far smaller hands in the 1940s yeah. to get in there to fit these spaces. A bit of a... Uh, bit of la labour of love. So they're just spaces, they don't turn them. Yeah, they're just spaces, yeah. Just, just designed to keep the cartridge guides in the right place. Yeah. When the cartridge feed through. So yeah, they're just spaces. Oh, <laughs> In the last few days, Chris has fitted the foot pedals into the nose of the French Lancaster NX664. These operate the two rudders. Keith has about 90% of the cover completed. This is number 3 fuel bay cover for the French wing. He is now on the edge. The rivets are flush on the inside. The fuel bay covers are structural part of the underwing and must be in place when lifting. What are, you, what are you lads making? Some trolley for the, um, the wing to go on. A trolley, are you? Yeah. yeah to, uh, this one, this one, we're going to make in two trolleys. The forms on, so you don't mind if I record it, there? Yeah. And to move it in and position them when we do the lift. Oh. These are the wing bolts and shackles they removed last week. A look inside number two tank bay. This is just James. This is number two, number two tank bay.
The nose of the French fuselage has been fitted by Chris in the last few days. I did interview Chris about the operation. Somehow it didn't record. I most likely didn't press record. He did say it went as good or better than expected. All the holes around the flange lined up and I think there are about 120 of them. Himself, Jerb and Gerald are fitting it out. Is that a wax polish you're putting on? Car polish. Car polish. And what are you up to, Dave? Um, just doing a quick kind of I don't know, rip, call it repair of the uh, tank panel there. I'll show you. Oh, I see. In there. Yeah. What's actually happened is over time the uh, tank panel strap um, buckle, turn buckle, has worn its way through. Now we can replace it or we could just like done here as a temporary measure because the wings could be refurbished in the future. Yeah. So just cut the damage out and just touch it up. Yeah. Oh, good. So, um, yeah. And this is number two tank? Yeah. Yeah, starboard number two. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's quite a lot of damage around inside as well. Uh, yeah. Internally, it's quite a few. Yeah. Uh, Most like to make new ones, ones rather when they yeah, yeah, probably. It's a lot of damage, even, even here, for instance, where, I don't know, I thought there was loose rivets, but there weren't loose rivets, so actually... Um, oh, yeah, they just look, look the at rivets, that. No, where the rivets have been put in, yeah. they've chattered against the, the, the outside yeah, yeah. of this. Um, so, yeah, that, that needs, this edge will need to be replaced at some stage. Yeah. Um, I hope Keith's here. The <laughs> time comes. Right, thank you, Dave. Right. Dave removed former 35, one of the two tailplane formers. These two formers are made from every material, also larger in size. The magician. <laughs> There's always one last river in this. It's in under a load of paint. Dave and Norman had to move part of the jig to de-rivet and remove rib 35.
The angle around the edge has been removed in situ. Is it savable? It's not that difficult to make another one. No, we'll make another one, but the likes of these, we we'll need to save these and cast it. Yeah. The actual thing for that one, you might as well take it. Yeah. One jet will play it flat, no, isn't it? Quite easy. That's a job. Mm. Keep running around the edge and then riveting. Keith working on riveting the sides of the fuel bay cover number two. It looks a classy piece of kit, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, doesn't it? Ah. Yes, looking a lot better. It worked good. Hmm. Yeah. It went back together good, did it? It did, it did, yeah. 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 Luckily, I had all the right bits. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are a few differences, actually, interestingly, between that one and this one. Oh, so there's obviously a few modifications carried out, even, yeah. though, even though they're quite short-lived. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is partly a little bit different. It's different, um, different access plate on here. So this is just a different to that one. So it's inter yeah. interesting to see how... Yeah. Um, so which was the later modification, this one? I think that one actually, oh, because when, when you look on these, this one, weapons, it has a modification plate. Yeah. Um, and this one has a modification 892, um, whereas that one has evidence of two modifications. So it would suggest that that one was modified beyond yeah. this one. So I think I think now, I think that one is probably the later one, but yeah. yeah. Can I spin it round? You can, yeah, you can. Thank you. It looks quite new. In fact, better than new, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah. I think it'll never ever be set no. going. Not to no. uh, shoot anything, but no. to. Uh, well, we did. We did use the. Uh, we used the belt last week and put, pulled the ammunition through. Um, and to see, and just it just all. It still works. Yeah. So the ammunition goes through. Yeah. This, is, this is good. Yeah. How many rounds did it fire a, a minute? So, about six, about six or seven hundred rounds a minute. Isn't that just a minute? Yeah. Oh. It's a relatively, you know, relatively slow. So. Well, it certainly did some damage then, wouldn't it? Yeah. You got the target. Yeah. yeah, I think that was the difficulty, is obviously you know, managing your ammunition, because if you well, yeah. tr press your trigger, and, yeah. Yeah, you've only got a finite amount of ammunition, it's quite yeah. big ammunition, so yeah. you can't fit that much in the tank, so you have to manage your, yeah. manage your trigger pressure. Yeah, five second burst. Five second burst, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. at yeah. most. Yeah. Morning, eh? Good morning, how are you? Fine, thanks. This is, this is the other half of the armoury, the turret shop. This is the FN5 half. Yeah. We're doing gun cradles today here. Sorry? We're doing gun cradles. Where are your gun mounts on? Yeah. So, um, so what goes in there? A bearing or, or yeah. is it a bush? There's a bearing there. So, um, cleaned up the frame but um so if you imagine so the, the front mount works quite a lot like a um quite like a like a vintage car bonnet catch oh, yeah. so um 
when the gun's when the gun's out, it's like that. Yeah. And then you put the front lugs of the gun in, and and it locks down. As a spring, does it? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Yeah, there's a spring, but they're off for cleaning, and then yeah. they go between there. And then when you move that lever, which you do from back here with a rod, that lock that locks them in. Yeah. And then when you want to take them out, you pull it back, which unlocks it, and then they spring back out again. So it gives you a clue, doesn't it? Because yeah. um, obviously Archie Fraser and Ash was actually a car builder. Did they move on to these during the war, or were they playing with them pre-war? The, the, uh, um, Fraser and Ash got involved around about um, 1934, 1935. So that, that's what basically there was in the mid 30s. There was a realization that we were we needed trouble. to come yeah. up with some some ideas. Yeah. And um, I mean, the history of it was basically. It went through handheld firearms in the back of biplanes, yeah. uh, and then they rapidly got onto the, the thing called the scarf ring. Which scarf was the bloke's name. He was a major, and he invented this ring whereby you could mount the weapon there. on and you yeah. could manually swing it round. Yeah. But they, with, with the increasing speeds of aircraft, you know, in the thirties, and obviously with a Spanish Civil War rate and people realised that we're going to need something better than that. And then mainly Fraser Nash was invited to get involved. Yeah. So they did um, they did quite a lot of travelling. Uh, a guy called Group Captain Keith and Fraser Nash and, uh, and Major Thompson did um, travelled actually quite extensively around Europe, seeing what other you know, in the thirties, seeing what other people were doing. Yeah, and there weren't. Nobody was really doing anything, so they came back and. Got the bail. Yeah, the Fraser Nash created the first hydraulically operated um, turret quite yeah. quite early on in. Oh, I'll say mid, mid 30s. Yeah. And had it functioning. It was yeah, it's quite rudimentary. So yeah, and then they kind of stuck with it. Yeah. And the only other um, manufacturer that was involved in turret manufacture really was Port and Port. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and Paul and Paul of the woodworking people, I yeah, well, Paul and Paul are famous for the Defiant, weren't they? Yeah. And they they had that, but they all of the turrets on the Halifax, for example, were Paul and Paul. Yeah. So it's been, and it, it took the load off Fraser Nash. I mean, Fraser Nash probably couldn't have produced enough for the Halifax no. Halifax fleet as well. So yeah. yeah so yeah, mid thirties really. There's a whole book on it called I Hold My Aim. Yeah. Written by Group Captain Keith, and it's fascinating about how it's the whole story of um, why we had eight eight Brownings on our fighters and why we had turrets. Yeah. And, and but they were this group of people were imagining imagining a war that we hadn't seen the like of, mm. and actually imagined it right. Yeah. You know, and worked out what we were going to need. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty close, I think. Yeah. I think it, looking back, there were some good inventors at the time. Yeah, they come yeah. up so quick we make stuff. with the answers to yeah. all the problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. It's was, it was a really. Good, I mean, so that book. There's, there's actually two. There's, I hold my aim, aim, which is Group Captain Keith, and there's a guy, one called The Guns of the Royal Air Force. Yeah. It's written by GF Wallace. And, th and there are two guys that are involved in the whole thing. Yeah. And it, it sort of just completely explains how all this, you know, came about. about. And it was just people's foresight. And luckily, at the time, in the in that period in the 30s, Dowding, was yeah. ended up running fight, uh, 11 Group, he was in procurement. So a lot yeah. of the stuff that Dowding bought, he ended up using. Yeah. You know, so, you know, or say he didn't buy it, he procured it, you know, he organised yeah, it. So yeah. The whole business with, you know, the eight gun fighters, turrets, yeah. radar, home yeah. chain, yeah. all that yeah. stuff, that was all the stuff he was dabbling with. Yeah. And then he ended up playing with it in, uh, yeah. in the Battle of Britain. It certainly was um, a good time, wasn't it? There were some staggering people about. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. staggeringly clever people. Yeah. And then they had that. Um,
Mullins. Desmond Mullins. Oh, yeah. And they had Desmond Mullins on side. You know, so any, anything that they couldn't work out, they go with Desmond Mullins and he worked out. You know, so, yeah. I know I started work in 53 and went into uh, Foster Gwynn's. They made the first tank in 1914 15. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> and the machine was still nearly the same. When I went in the machine shop, it was one mass of overhead pulleys and belts coming down to uh, drive uh, right, the yeah, lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that, I yeah. thought, what they produced there, looking back, was yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The gear they've got. And yeah. then thinking that this went through the war, I think they were making guns of some sort. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure what they were making during the Second World War, but yeah. the First World War, it was all tanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were quite a force, weren't we? Yeah, we Ma were. At manufacturing. Yeah, yeah we were quite a and force. then what happened to it? Yeah, where did it all go? It was easier to buy it, wasn't it? Buy yeah, it, buy some Japanese. Get stuff. it cheaper from someone else. Yeah, yeah. how it goes. Yeah, stop getting into politics. Yeah, Come on, we've still got all the old stuff, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why I like watching it, seeing it. Yeah, yeah. And the invention now they came up with the castings and the shapes and I yeah, mean it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Right, right. So, uh, hey. Does that mean it's lunchtime? What? Does that mean it's lunchtime? No, I'm early <laughs> today. No, it's, um, oh, I've gone hungry now. Oh, you're it's 11.08. I've got another hour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Thank, Thank you. you. How's it been? You in? Not quite. The sort of bouncing back, you have to, have to push on the... I can't the same time as Italy because it's bouncing back again. Dave and Norman reassembled a cross member of the jig. <laughs> Why did you have to move that? Why did you have to move the beam? To get to the rivets sandwiched between here. Oh, yeah. There, you couldn't get to the rivets, so we had to slide it back, drill the rivets off, and it all comes away, then it's pointed back to the actual support down. No. To get to the other side? Yeah. <laughs> get to the other side. <laughs> Rib number 35, the angle was de-riveted from the web before being removed from the fuselage. Rib number 35 and 38 support the tail point. This rivets onto this angle. This is the angle which runs around the outer edge of rib 35. Jerbs fitted a new seal ring for the front blister. Chris reassembling and fitting the autopilot.
That unit Chris was working on with the round, uh, the round yeah, circle. That unit Chris is working on. That round circular yeah. is, is feeding the pipes to it. What is that? It's all part of the uh, George. George. Oh, the automatic pilot. pilot. Yeah. All right, so Pilos yeah. All right. It's auto pilot. Good. We can't talk to you about it. It's still on the secret list. Oh, is it good? <laughs> it's a plumber's nightmare. Is it? Oh, snake's wedding in there, mate. Honest. Oh. You can easily get them piped up wrong, can you? Well, luckily not for us, because it's never going to work again. Yeah. This unit the working, so it's really complicated. Yeah. The inside of it, you've got to see it, it's looked well. No. Yeah, it's proper. Whoever designed it, we, we were saying earlier, the amount of designs which came from 1930 to 1950 were fantastic in engineering. Yeah. It's, they say it's a sad fact of war that it's during war the greatest technological yeah. Made. yeah. Is that the original seal you put in round with the... No, brand the, new. New, is it? Um, original's in that black bin bag. We have a bit of original somewhere. Yeah. The, old, the old stuff's absolutely shot there. Oh, was it? Perished. Perished. Yeah. Distort. Yeah. Oh. Could be the original rubber one then. Yeah. Yeah. That cut it. Oh, dear. That cut it the stone on. So it's a piece here like that. Yeah. Fastens on the end and the actual first bit hooks up to it. Yeah. But then they put the seal around it. Yeah. So it sticks like hell, I can't get it off. So I got the good old fastened stone that I felt. Put it right around it. Put it right off. Oh, good. Need a new one anyway. Yeah. Put it right off, I'm telling it. Jacob riveted his wingtip with assistance from John. TV.